Welcome back. In this part, we start programming how the chess pieces move. To begin with, let's close these tabs from last time. And we can collapse the UI project, because in this part, we'll be working exclusively in chess logic. Let's add a new class called move type. It should be a public enum. And it will contain a value for each type of move in the game. Most moves will have a type called normal. We'll focus on these moves for now. But let's go ahead and add types for all the special moves as well. Later, we will handle castling kingside. and casting queenside. There is also a special move that allows a pawn to advance two squares. Pawns can also be captured on passant. And they can be promoted if they make it to the other end of the board. All of these special moves will be handled in a later part, so don't worry about them for now. The next thing we'll do is add a new folder called Moves. This folder will eventually contain classes for all the move types. But before we handle any concrete moves, We'll add a move base class. Just like in our pieces folder, the class is put into a different namespace by default. I don't want that, so let's just change it to chess logic like all the other classes. Alright, this move class will be a base class for all the concrete moves. So let's make it abstract. Great. All moves have a move type. A from position. This is where the piece moves from. They also have a two position. Which is where the piece moves to. Each move will also have an execute method. It takes a board as parameter and executes itself on that board. If you are familiar with design patterns, this is a bit like the command pattern. Okay, next let's create a class for the normal move. I'll just change the namespace. and make it inherit from move. This class will be used for all moves that simply move a piece from one position to another. The move may capture an opponent piece, but otherwise it won't have any side effects. The type property should return movetype.normal And we also need properties for the from and to positions.
Next, we add a constructor which takes those positions. and stores them in our properties. Okay, now to the interesting part, the execute method. It is the code in this method that will actually make the move happen. We need to take the piece at from position and move it to to position. First, we get the piece at from position. Then we place it at to position. Remove it from its original position. And finally, we set the pieces has moved property to true. That's it. Now we are ready to write some code which generates all the legal moves. To keep things organized, we'll put that code inside each piece subclass. But first, let's open the base class. Here we'll add another abstract method called getMoves. It takes two parameters, a position called from, this will be the current position of the piece, and then a board. Using these parameters, the piece can return a collection containing all the moves it can make. The position parameter is required because the pieces don't store their own position on the board. Ok, three of the pieces move using a similar pattern. I'm referring to the bishop, the rook and the queen. These pieces can all move as many positions as they want in certain directions. To make that easy to implement, let's add a helper method which returns all reachable positions in a given direction. It needs the position of the moving piece, the board, and a direction. Let me explain how it will work. Given the position of a piece and a direction, the goal is to find all reachable positions in that direction. Here's how we can do it. First, check the position one step away from the piece in the given direction. If it's empty, report it as reachable and continue. Do this until either the end of the board is reached or another piece is encountered. If that piece belongs to the opponent, it can be captured, so its position is also reachable. But if we encounter a piece with the same color, then its position is not reachable. To implement this little algorithm, we write a loop it starts at the position from plus one step in the given direction. It continues while the position is inside the board and after each iteration it takes another step. Note how easy that was to express with our overloaded plus operator. 
Okay, inside the loop, we check if the current position is empty. If so, it is reachable and we can yield return it. And continue to the next position immediately. Otherwise, there is a piece at the position. And if it belongs to the opponent, then it can be captured, so its position is also reachable. If the piece does not belong to the opponent, its position is not reachable. But either way, we have encountered a piece, and since the bishop, rook and queen cannot jump, we don't have to check any more positions. Great. Let's also add a method which takes an array of directions. Its job is to collect the reachable positions for all the given directions. We can do that easily using the select many method. This one line of code gives us a collection containing all reachable positions in the given directions. Perfect. Now let's go to the bishop class. The bishop can move any number of squares diagonally. So let's add a static direction array containing all diagonal directions. We need northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. With this array and the helper methods we just wrote, it's super easy to implement get moves. First, we call move positions in directions. Passing in the from position, the board, and the directions array. This gives us all reachable positions. For each of them, we must create a normal move, which moves the piece there. That's easy to do using the select method. That's it. Now we can ask any bishop which moves it can make on the given board. Next, we move to the rook class. The rook can move any number of squares horizontally and vertically. Once again, we will add a direction array. this time containing north, 
south, east, and west. The implementation of get moves will be exactly the same as for the bishop. If you want, you can just copy and paste it from that class. Great. Now let's go to the queen class. The queen can move any number of squares horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. So we need a direction array. containing north, south, east, west, as well as northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. Once again, the implementation of get moves is the same. So just add that method here as well. We can now generate moves for the bishop, rook and queen. The pawn, king and knight do not quite follow the same move pattern. We will implement the getMoves method for these pieces in the next part. See you then.